Welcome, everybody. My name is Christopher Beyer, Principal Product Marketing Manager here at Summa Logic. And with me, I have Chaz, one of our CTOs here at Summa Logic. And we're going to be discussing uh, the latest, latest Magic Quadrant from Gartner uh, for SIM 2024. Hey, Chaz, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me. So it's very exciting this last week. We've had RSA. Now we have the Magic Quadrant coming out. Uh, and I think uh, Summa Logic did place pretty well. Yeah, I got to say, when I saw the results, I was quite excited. Um, a lot of us here at Summa Logic are excited. Um, we had significant vertical movement upwards, right, in in the ability to execute, which is really just a testament to how much work we've been putting into the platform and, you know, delivering on what customers are asking for, um, you know, and, and to be honest, you know, I, I would say in this atmosphere, customers are really getting tired of solutions that over promise and under, under deliver. And so being ranked so high, you know, we're, if you look at the magic quadrant, I don't know if you can see it there in the top right of your screen there. Um, but we're really now top five in the ability to execute effectively. Right. So, Again, that's a testament for just all of the hard work that we put in um, to building this this modern cloud sim and analytics solution. And you know, when I was looking at this when it first came out, I was looking at the top five, and I realized, you know, I was kind of surprised. Once you eliminate the the quote unquote legacy players, right, those that are not built on modern cloud or microservice based architectures. Um, it's really top two, right? In the ability to execute, it's us and Microsoft. So that's pretty exciting. I think that now is the time for us to really accelerate. Um, you know, Francisco Partners is of course backing us now. And I think we're gonna have the ability to start, um, you know, innovating and, and moving right as well. So that'll be exciting to see how we uh, place in the next one. So let's get, let's get really specific. So our dot moved uh, from the visionary quadrant up to the challenger quadrant. And in fact, the top of the challenger quadrant as the case may be. So what were the key strengths that uh, Gardner highlighted that, that put us into that position? You know, for us, I think it always comes back to problems that others are having a difficulty or difficult time solving. Um, scalability and flexibility is huge, right? And, and again, like I mentioned before, the elastic nature on which our platform was built at the very outset just allows for, you know, our cloud compute to scale up as, it, as the demand um, increases, right? And, you know, what a lot of people don't realize is the scale at which Sumo Logic is operating. Um, the numbers I heard last were our platform analyzes like over three exabytes of data daily, right? And that's tens of millions of real-time insights being um, produced over three quadrillion records of logs ingested, right? And so those numbers hurt your head. Um, but I think that's why Gartner ranked us so high in the ability to execute because, you know, the scale at which we've achieved um, is, is staggering, right? And I think that's really a requisite to even be in the market today the digital exhaust, right? The telemetry that's being put out by our, you know, applications and our cloud infrastructure and on-prem infrastructure. Um, you know, everybody says it's growing exponentially. And if you don't have a platform that can scale dynamically um, to meet that demand, then you're already, you know, you're already playing catch up. So fortunately we solved that problem and I think they're just recognizing it. No, I, I completely agree. And it actually, becomes a foundation for some of the other things that they said in the, in the, in this latest report, um, including uh, Sumo's ability uh, to deploy AI, you know, capabilities and features uh, in, into our product and platform. You got to have the data for, for AI to really uh, function properly. And I think they pointed out specifically our insight trainer as yeah. uh, one of one of those features that that uh, was very impressed, they were impressed by. Yeah, and I think you're going to see a huge shift too because um, the ability for AI to just chew through mountains of data and provide 
insights or intelligence is staggering, right? So um, Sumo Logic, of course, is a security data lake. That's what we're built um, on top of. And now that we're adding AI capabilities like our new AI driven alerting and our Sumo Logic Copilot, um, I think it's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, how much more value, because if you think about it, customers are paying to ingest the data, but they're also paying for that data retention. So they're sitting on a mountain of data. And up until this point, it's been like standing on top of a mountain with a shovel. Like you can't really dig too deep, no matter, you know, you know, no matter how good of a digger you are. Um, but with the advent of AI, where it can ingest monumental amounts of data and then actually understand it and provide intelligent response and, you know, crafting that, the queries, for example, that we're doing with Copilot, um, bubbling up those insights. I think that in the next six and 12 months, the industry is going to be unrecognizable. And I think we're positioned pretty well to take advantage of that. No, I absolutely agree with this too. It's about, you know, really developing that competitive differentiation. I see a lot of solutions, uh, Chaz, on the market that are touting AI, they're using AI, but they seem to be trying to solve old you know, problems. Like, like you just mentioned, hey, we need a lot of data here. You need to build an infrastructure that allows you to scale. But if you don't have that in infrastructure, you're using AI to limit how much data you're 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 bringing in? You're hoping it's the right data, whereas uh, I believe Sumo again is poised and positioned uh, a little bit to for the future. We need to talk about what those future kind of industry trends are. But how do we use technologies like AI to solve future problems? Yeah, it's a good question. Um... You know, we use the term force multiplier, maybe we overuse it a little bit, but, but uh, what I've seen, especially, you know, Sumo Logic has, you know, over 2000 customers now, and some of them are extremely mature. And the ones that are really impressing me have um, gone all in on a few technologies. One is doing everything as code, right? And that includes automation. And, you know, if you look historically, automation has been, hard to do in the detection space because um, you have to have extremely high fidelity alerts in order to accept the risk of automating some sort of response, right? And so when you bring in AI now and you're doing advanced predictive analytics and outlier detection and entity centric, you know, baselining, um, all of a sudden what you see is the alerts increase dramatically in fidelity which leads right into a better automation experience, right? Because you can trust the alert, you can trust the remediation and the response. Um, you know, and, and it just so happens that, you know, as Sumo Logic has a full-blown SOAR platform that includes hundreds of playbooks and integrations, et cetera, um, the customers now are able to take some of this AI-driven learning, some are, of our very good user entity behavior analytic style alerts, and then pass that right into the automation service, um, which we provide, by the way, at no cost in our platform, um, and really get huge efficiency gains, right? So things that would typically take 5, 10, 15 minutes for a, front, a tier one analyst to do has now been automated away. Now, and you might think, oh, what's five minutes? Well, when you're in the chair for a full shift and you're constantly being bombarded with alerts, if you can give back your analyst 10 minutes on every alert that they triage because the alert was good and the automation took care of, you know, the remediation and some of the response or the enrichment or notifications or whatever action, um, it's a game changer, right? And so we're pretty excited. I think that we're putting our investment in the exact right places so we can eventually help those mature customers or those that are not mature but get into that doing everything as code and automating as much away as possible. You see, I think that's exactly what Gartner was trying to uh, to tell us by by raise, raising us up so much in, in the Magic Quadrant is that ability to execute and solve customer problems. 
And of, of course, you know, it's important to, to get feedback from our customers and apply that feedback. But I, I think that uh, our customers are absolutely uh, influencing how we shape the, mm -hmm. the, the product moving forward. And, and that's what Gartner is seeing in, in our ability to execute. But is this the kind of feedback that you've been getting from customers as well? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think customers are demanding more usable systems, right? It's nice to be on the bleeding edge, but oftentimes that comes with a lot of pain and a lot of friction. Um, and that's one of the reasons why Sumo Logic scores so well with our customers is um, it is actually easy to use, right? It's powerful and easy, which those two things don't often go hand in hand. Um, but, you know, our mission is to democratize data, specifically democratize security data in this case. And when you have a tool like Sumo Logic that facilitates collaboration and teamwork and being able to distribute that, the security operations across the different system owners and stakeholders and analysts, um, you know, that's, that is the future of, you know, DevSecOps, right, where everybody's got a piece of the security puzzle, everybody's collaborating, everybody's leveraging AI, everybody's using, um, you know, security data lake for that central repository or that elusive single pane of glass that we've been chasing, right? Um, we're now finally getting to the point where the technology is catching up to what the customers have been asking for for so long. So uh, answer me this, Jess, right? Without without naming names, right? <laughs> but what, what kind of product do we need to have in order to be a leader in, in the Magic Quadrant? Obviously, we we are we've obviously improved our ability to execute. We're solving customer problems, top five. And as you said before, it's really top two or three if you if you really look at uh, the solutions out there that are delivering a, a cloud native experience with the right analytics, with the right AI, and and uh, you know solving the the customers' problems. What 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 more could we do to uh, to jump over that line into the leaders' quadrant? Yeah. So good question, um, and it's a hard question. I would say um, continue to invest in what's what you know works, right? So um, in today's market, customers are really looking for tool consolidation. And so as Sumo Logic strives to be a platform of choice, that necessitates, you know, integrating with the entire security stack, right? Including, you know, coming to the table with hundreds of out of the box integrations and actions. And, you know, our Sumo Logic Threat Labs team, for example, is amazing. Um, you know, they think about what they're doing. They're managing a library of over 900 detection rules um, and tracking the attack landscape. You know, what's the threat of the day? Release these detections globally, um, you know, on a weekly basis so that customers don't have to right? Chasing after that true SaaS easy button way, but not diluting the power of the platform. Um, and so I think that as we continue to increase our integrations, increase our detection fidelity, increase our out of the box content, um, customers are going to recognize that, right? And they're going to, they're going to gravitate towards the Sumo Logic approach. You know, and we've been doing this for, uh, for over 12 years, right? We were pioneers in the cloud native space. As you track the, the, the Gartner Magic Quadrant, um, you know, in some ways it's still surprising to see legacy vendors hanging on tooth and nail, like fighting for their life. Um, but the reality is they don't scale appropriately. They're not built in that SaaS style of solution. Um, they're not cloud native. They're not built on microservice architectures, et cetera. Um, so what I expect to see is um, either those those companies quickly learn to refactor refactor and get rid of that tech debt, which is extremely hard to do, or our trend continues to to really rise above, right? And and I think that's proven out over time as you track, you know, where Sumo Logic started in this journey. I think you said something that that was a, a bit profound. 
uh, uh, Chaz, in how many integrations or what kind of tech stack a lot of these customers have that uh, I, I think an essential feature uh, along the same line um, is, is a solution that is agnostic mm. to, to the, the tech that you have that, that allows you to take advantage of the uh, investments that, that you've already made, whether they're on-prem investments or cloud uh, investments. So looking looking for those solutions that are open that way or or agnostic to to your your uh, tech stack, I think is going to be important as well. Yeah, I agree. And you know, there's there are some really incredible technologies out there coming from you know the big the big players in this space, like the Microsofts and the and the Amazons. Um, and you know, of course, we're tracking that and and you know, monitoring what they're doing. Um, but in some ways, it's to our advantage that we're a little bit more agile, right? And we're a disruptive player because we can listen to customers and we can move fast with new technology. Um, and, and that's something that we have to use to our advantage, I think. And then, you know, play up the fact that we are one of the, the only true, um, you know, vendor agnostic solutions that are built on these cloud native technologies, right? So you want to bring in your your AWS or GCP or Azure logs or whatever EDR flavor of choice, right? Um, we treat all those data sources equally. And so it's nice to know that as you're building your security operations program, um, you're doing it on a technology that, not, that doesn't have to be ripped out as maybe you shift to a different cloud provider or you shift to a different endpoint protection solution. Um, all of the the automations and you know the collection et cetera that you built out over time can be consistent as these point solutions on the perimeter uh, kind of come and go. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you, Chaz, for having this discussion with us. Is there any final comments about uh, Sumo Logic's uh, lofted position as the 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 challenger, you know, in the uh, Magic Quadrant? No, I mean, I think you coined it nicely there on, on your background, challenge accepted. Um, this is exciting times for Sumo. And if you want to come um, experience the Sumo Logic platform, just reach out to us. We love doing, <clears throat> we love doing proof of values um, because then you really get to see with your own data how we're achieving some of these um, these lofty claims or as they would seem lofty, right? Um, but certainly, you know, come, come over and give it a shot. We'd love to, to work with you guys. Thank you. And thanks everybody for uh for staying with us. Yeah, thanks for having me.